this video, I'll be using the following products. Links are in the description. Milliput has kindly provided these products for me to use in this video. It is a company based in the UK and produces this amazing epoxy putty that can be used for virtually anything. It's easy to use and easy to sculpt. It is waterproof and sets rock solid. It also comes in many different colors. If you want to learn more about this product, be sure to visit their website. I always make sure I paint my figures with Arteza's premium acrylic paints. Honestly guys, the quality of this paint is really good. So I suggest you check the links in the description to find out more and order some for yourself. I'll be using masking tape, PVA glue, sculpting tools, paint brushes, lots of super glue, tons of time and lots of patience and a glass of water. Now we're all set, we can start this project. Hello everyone, this is Marco and welcome back to my channel. Today is the day. I have finally uploaded this video. It took so long to make this rubber spinosaurus project. You have no idea. I did already upload the sculpting section of this project. So if you want a closer look on how I sculpted it, you can go and watch that video. In this one, I will explain how I made the rubber version. Now the reason why this project took so long to make is because of the molding and casting procedure, which is uh, very time consuming to say the least, especially if something goes wrong, which is exactly what happened. Well, it didn't actually go so wrong. It's just sometimes I get a little bit too excited and can't wait to see how it comes out. So I tend to rush the molding. Now that is, a, that is a very bad habit. If I was to do this again and make it properly, I would probably use a different method. So this is the thing about experience. You can't learn things if you don't make mistakes. So I can definitely say I learned from this mistake. Basically, I had an idea. Because I have to make this project indoors, I can't really use fiberglass to do the outside of the mold, which is what keeps the silicon in place and prevents it from warping and bending, which is what silicon rubber does. Silicon rubber, because of its rubbery nature, just tends to kind of flop about if it doesn't have a very solid outer shell, which is the reason why this type of mold is called fiberglass jacket mold. I'll try and explain it very quickly, but I think I'll do a proper video in the future explaining the different kinds of molds and clearing up the confusion between molding and casting, which seems to uh, confuse a lot of people. Now my mistake was instead of using fiberglass, I used paper mache, which in theory works really well, but I didn't do it thick enough. You see what the problem is? Paper mache tends to warp a bit. It's still pretty strong, but if you don't put enough armature in it or just something to strengthen it, it will bend. At the time, I did think that might happen, but because <laughs> I was so eager to get a cast so quickly, I just didn't pay much attention to it. Also, I forgot to mention the reason why I can't use fiberglass right here is because I don't have the right workspace in order to do it. You need a very well ventilated area because fiberglass is toxic. It is very bad for you. So you could do it outside in your garden, but I don't have a garden. So yeah, I had to find an alternative. And the alternative is uh, in fact, paper mache, which is a lot less toxic. So the best thing for me to do is to strengthen the paper mache jacket or outer shell with uh, something stronger. What I use was just some wooden uh, lollipop sticks, but I think the best solution is to cover the whole thing with milliput, which is very, very tough and definitely will not bend. Well, I do realize that this is a workaround and it still isn't ideal, but, but it works. And I'm definitely gonna do that on the next project, which is gonna be a new Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yes, I have decided to re-sculpt the T-Rex again, but much bigger and with much finer detail. I will then mold that T-Rex sculpt and make a new rubber saw T-Rex the ultimate Rubber Saw T-Rex. I promise you it's gonna be special. 
So anyway, if the mold bends, it means that the piece won't cast properly. In fact, the cast that came out of the molds had way more air bubbles trapped inside of it, which ruins all the detail and makes the rubber less strong and less durable. Also, because of air getting trapped, some parts didn't even cast at all. Now, I did put a lot of bleeder holes, which are holes in the mold where air can escape, but it wasn't working properly anyway. The more holes, the more I'd have to fix the cast. And by fixing, I mean cleaning. Because the cast doesn't come out perfect, obviously. Any cast that you make from a mold always comes out with seams or extra parts that need to be cut off. That's just the nature of molding and casting. The extra parts that you need to cut off are usually the parts where the rubber or the resin or whatever you're using to cast goes and fills in the space of the pore holes and the bleeder holes. So basically the mold I made still worked, it just required a lot of cleaning and fixing, which, uh, <laughs> which takes a very long time and isn't ideal. And it's weird because once you have the model in hand, you could never tell that there would be so much work behind it. But uh, that's just the thing about handmade things. And that's the reason why they're more expensive, because there's a lot more work being put into it than uh, manufactured stuff. Factory made objects are made by a bunch of people that have their work spread out. But I'm uh, by myself. Well, I have my girlfriend helping me sometimes, but it's just me doing everything. My girlfriend just helps pour the rubber mixes into the molds, and sometimes she helps me make the easier molds too, like box molds and stuff like that, which I will explain uh, in a separate video. So because it is a pain to make these Spinosaurs, I just got to make a few, like a limited run. But I can assure you that with the new T-Rex I'm gonna make, the molds are gonna be spiffing. They're gonna be perfect, which will make the whole making procedure a lot quicker and a lot easier. So you can look forward to that I will be making a lot more T-Rexes in the future. I guarantee it. I will spare no expense. Well, some. I also plan to make a video about texturing, specifically about texture pads. I would also like to make more unboxing videos. I've recently been able to get my hands on the new Mattel Sinoceratops figure, which <laughs> looks to be amazing. The sculpt on that is beautiful, in my opinion. I have also re-sculpted and remolded the raptors. I decided to re-sculpt them because I had to remold them anyway. The thing about molds is that they have a lifespan. There's only so many casts you can make with a mold. Well, that's because the more casts you make from a mold, the silicon will start deteriorating, therefore becoming too damaged and unusable. So I will debut my new sculpt with the next raptors that I will release, which are going to be the male and the female series three raptors. So while I was making the Spinosauruses and making the raptors, I was also making another thing. And that other thing is a Dilophosaurus. Now, if you are a Patreon of mine, you would have known this already for quite a while, actually. I've designed a Dilophosaurus figure in the same scale as my other figures. So this Dilophosaurus figure is going to be added to my Rubbersaurs lineup. But this one's quite special because it will have a removable frill and it will be able to squirt water. Oop. All the packaging has been designed too, so it's just a question of casting a bunch and then making a video about it. So you can look forward to that too. I'd love to sculpt other dinosaurs too, like the Carnotaurus, Triceratops, and the Allosaurus, and <laughs> so many. Sinoceratops is really cool, Nasutoceratops is awesome. Man, there's so many dinosaurs I would love to sculpt, but you know, it takes time, so if you want <laughs> If you want to know more, uh, I suggest you subscribe so you don't miss any update. I have received a message from uh, an old friend of mine. I used to go to school with him um, in Liceo or uh, high school, I think it is. We used to go together at uh, my old art school. And since then, he has become a very successful 3D designer and he owns 3D printers. He got in contact with me and said that he wants to collab with me and I have a very good idea which is going to be uh, great and you should be very excited if you like my rubber saws. I'm not going to spoil it. I will definitely do a video in the future. So stay tuned 
And if you want to know everything, and if you want to know everything before everyone else, you can become my Patreon. And if you subscribe to my Patreon, you'll be able to see all my latest projects as I develop them. You'll also be able to give me input and give me ideas for future stuff too. If you become a Patreon, it will help me immensely with the materials and just keeping this channel alive. All proceeds and funds will go towards supporting my channel. I think I've, uh, I think I'm running out of things to say, so <laughs> enjoy the rest of this video without me talking. But first, I want to remind you that all my links are in the description. You can purchase a Spinosaurus from my Etsy shop. Now, I'll see you at the end of this video. So this is my Marco Makes Rubber Sauce Spinosaurus. I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know what you think in the comment section down below. If you're excited, leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more. Thanks so much for your support, it really means the world. I will see you in the next video, bye bye! Hey, you can also buy my figures and my paintings, as well as some sick merch on Etsy. Yes, I have an Etsy shop and the link is in the description. I would like to give a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. Seriously guys, your support really does mean the world to me, as it helps me do what I love for you. You help me buy materials, and most of all, you give me a helping hand with improving the quality of the content of my videos. Even if it's just a small donation, every little helps. If you like my videos, please press the like button. And you could uh, consider subscribing. It's free. Oh, and don't forget to press the notification bell button. Because you don't want to miss any of my new stuff, right? I'm gonna say bye now, because when you gotta go, you gotta go. I will see you in the next one.